first, uh, let me make three points. Uh, I want to commend uh, Mr. Pollock, Pentagon, uh, Fiddle, for uh, adopting a Pew disclosure form. That should be the standard for financial institutions throughout the country, so thank you. Second, uh, I think one of the most um, satisfying uh, aspects of the Dodd-Frank Act for me was working with Senator Brown to create the Office of uh, Service Members Affairs, and particularly delighted that Holly Petraeus is leading it, so thank you for what you're doing. Third, uh, in the mid-70s, I commanded a paratrooper company, and before that, I was the executive officer of the company, which meant every day I got letters from creditors and I got young paratroopers telling me how they bought a $25,000 truck on a $70,000 a year income. Uh, but what I've heard today is, I think, even more outrageous than I recollect in terms of what's being done to military personnel, particularly now in a time of war. Uh, so whatever we've done, it's not enough, and we've got to do more. Let me start with that premise. But let me focus in on this particular issue. It was alluded to in Admiral Abbott's testimony, and thank you, by the way, sir, for your selfless service through the Mutual Aid Association to the Marines and Sailors and to our, your colleagues in the Army and the Air Force. But uh, we have uh, facilities that operate on bases, and the expectation, I think, is that they're on a military base from the individual service members is that they are... The, the sort of the gold addition, because they've got the a stamp of approval. They're sitting there. I know they operate under operating agreements, so the question I want to address to Ms. Petraeus and Ms. Spain and, and the Admiral is, um, are those operating agreements sufficient? Are they being enforced? And I'll just say uh, there is some indication in an Army Times story that some of these facilities are charging far in excess of the uh, fees for uh, mispayments or, or failure to pay on time, et cetera, than is normal. So, Ms. Petraeus? Um, I will say, um, as you mentioned, they do have a contract to operate on those installations, and they are expected to do certain things. Part of that contract is to provide financial education. Um, certainly, there should also be transparency in the fees that they're charging. And um, when that contract comes up for review, that's an opportunity for the services to decide if um, they are treating their customers right. Um, I will say that we're taking a look at the issue of uh, what are the special products that um, financial institutions are providing for service members. We put a federal register notice in um, about a month and a half ago asking for input from across the field saying, let us know what you are doing. And we're going to have a, a one-day forum next month where we discuss both the issues and then um, some of the things that are being done um, that are on the positive side. And um, hopefully that'll serve um, kind of to put the word out about what, what's being done that's commendable and um, what are the issues that need to be addressed. And uh, we look forward to some cross-pollination, if you will. I hope people will look at that and go back and say, why can't our institution do this? So mm -hmm. I'm pleased about that. Ms. Spain, your comments? <clears throat> There's a credit union that operates on Ellsworth Air Force Base, and they support um, financial education through grants that allow us to go to the base to provide the education. The military members and the Family Readiness Center haven't had any complaints regarding the particular credit union. Thank you. And Admiral Abbott, or you can elaborate on your comment. Senator, I know that uh, our service members and our, our clients at Navy Marine Corps Relief Society are grateful for the uh, services that they do get from the finance industry on base. That's a great convenience, and we uh, are grateful for it. Um, I do agree that the um, renegotiation of the periodic contract is a spot at which uh, there ought to be a frank discussion about mm -hmm. um, practices and that uh, the local leadership should be empowered to uh, discuss those issues with the, uh, with the bank and credit union leadership. We've heard today about some commendable best practices. Uh, I personally believe there's an opportunity for a discourse uh, consolidation of those in a way that would benefit uh, all of the military installations that have those facilities. Well, thank you. Uh, my time is about expired. Uh, General Bergner, uh, I don't want to, to uh, uh, upset your, uh, your premise that you have good customers, because I've been a customer for 40 years, uh, so uh, <laughs> forgive me. Uh, back in 1971, I insured a very dashing Triumph with USAA, Triumph Sports Car, 
Uh, the, war, the years have passed, and now I'm insuring a 1991 Ford Escort. But that's, that's what happens as you grow older. So, but thank you for your service and my regards again to General Mulroy. Thank you. Thank you all.